Okay, good morning. Um, I'm assuming we're on live now. Uh, so I'm doing something a little bit different today. I'm, I'm broadcasting from Zoom, so I can uh, I can use the screen sharing to share some kind of material, some some diagrams and things. Um, yeah. So this morning, um, this week, I've been looking at uh, different. Uh, uh, I suppose area of technology and that sort of thing, and uh, um, you know cultural things, you know like economics and uh, have a session on the new age. Um, so today uh, the topic is the five paths. So what are the five paths? Well, um, in Tri Ratna uh, we have a system of spiritual discipline or practice. Um, and um, if you look at Sibuti's uh, seven papers, it says that the uh, it's loosed on the five chief paths. So the the five paths are a teaching teaching from <coughs> Central and Tibetan Buddhism, um, and uh, yeah, so they're they're different really to 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 the to the system of practice. Um, and in a way, Sangharachita, uh, when he was trying to, you know, evolve a system, uh, I think he um, he looked at like the 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 teaching on mindfulness. So the four foundations of mindfulness are the kind of um, teaching on mindfulness from the Pali from the Pali Canon. Um, and he, he thought, well, how does this fit in with, like, say, loving kindness? You know, so. Uh, so he evolved the system where he had integration as the first um, factor and then positive emotion as the second one. Uh, so integration, positive emotion, spiritual death, spiritual um, rebirth and uh, spiritual re receptivity has ended up being the Or, or, or spontaneous compassionate activity in terms of the enlightenment. Um, so yeah, so the the so I've been looking at all this and sort of trying to make sense of Theravada teachings and Mahayana teachings and trying to to understand them and uh, look for common threads that may something maybe underneath them. Um, so in two thousand and eleven, I uh, published an article in um, in Shabda, which is the the Tree Ratna Buddhist Order Journal um, on on the five paths to try and kind of ex uh, bring out this this sort of teaching. Um, so I'm going to look at that later on. Uh, but uh, before then, we'll do we'll do um, we'll do a bit of body work and then uh, a bit of meditation. So. Just do it sitting down, actually, I think. Yeah. So begin by drumming with your fingers on top of your head. Uh, rub your hands together. And just give your face a bit of a massage, a bit of a wash with your hands. And hold your hands over your face. And curving your, your spine over so that it's like you're turning, you're curling up in like a bit of a fetal position and turning away from the world. And tuning in with how you're feeling at the moment. <coughs> and then just, just, uh, Put your fingers out to the side and just do little circles. 
and try to try to gauge well what has a good effect on you. So is doing smaller circles better or is, is doing larger circles better? Is is going slower better or is it going quicker better? Just working out working it out in your own experience. I think I prefer slower at the moment today. And then using the next finger, this finger, whatever finger that is, pointing that outwards. The ring finger. And your little finger. Yeah, again, just working out what, what do you prefer? Slower, faster, smaller or larger circles? Okay. And then just twisting to the side. The other side. Okay, so we're going to do the Meta Bhavna. Um, so I'm just going to ring the bells for five stage Meta Bhavna. And uh, sometimes, if I've done a lot of sessions in a row that, that, that have got a lot of material in them, it's a bit tiring mentally. So I'm just going to ring the bells. I'm not going to lead the meditation this morning. Give yourself a bit of a break. So just setting yourself up in your posture, just allows your body to just sit there. And tuning into how you're feeling at the moment. Tuning into what it what it feels like to to care about something, you know, to care about yourself, to care about other people. If you if you find that difficult, maybe think of a friend that you think is quite caring, what they're like, how they do that. And imitate them, imitate their behaviour. Okay, so Meta Bhavna, loving kindness meditation.
So second stage, metadata, loving kindness towards a friend, good friend.
So third stage, loving kindness towards the neutral person.
you know, now both days loving kindness towards something we find we find difficult. Fifth, in the fifth stage, loving kindness towards all beings everywhere.
uh, extending loving kindness to people in your vicinity. <clears throat> your town, city, your environment around you. including animals, birds, fish, insects, everything that's alive. May it all be well. So in your own time, just bringing that meditation to a close. All right, so today's topic um, seems to have frozen in Facebook somewhere, somehow. Gone into cry cryogenic suspension. Um, yeah, so today's topic is, uh, is the five paths. And um, as I said in the introduction, that. Uh, Five Paths is a, is a teaching from Tibetan Buddhism um, that, uh, I don't know, I think it probably evolved uh, gradually, uh, but uh, I think um, 
Kamala Sheila, who I think lived sometime around maybe 800, uh, had a part in, in developing it. Um, so in, in Buddhism, you get, um, you get uh, various um, lists of terms, you know, you get, you know, sometimes people kind of think, oh, God, all, all these lists. You know, so you got like the four noble truths and the eight noble eightfold path and um, the five spiritual faculties and uh, uh, even the, the the thirty-seven wings to awakening. In you know, um, and um, so yeah, so I've been trying to to think how to how to explain all of that. You know, what are, what do all these lists you know mean, or how do they off? You know, how can you have a path? A path to uh, to nirvana to awakening, which includes, which is different, you know. You could say, oh, because if you look in the Pali Canon, it says, you know, the, the way to nirvana is the noble eightfold path. Well, it includes nirvana in it, um, and then you might see see that the way to nirvana is the four is the four foundations of mindfulness. So that's that's in the Satipatthana Sutta, and uh, and the way to nirvana is the the uh, the five spiritual faculties or in or the thirty seven wings to awakening. Um, well, I think the way of explaining that is that um, uh, the the central teaching of the Buddha is that all things arise in dependence on conditions. Um, that's the the law of pratichya samapada or conditionality, <coughs> and um, so. For instance, uh, if we take the Noble Eightfold Path, um, which is the way leading to the cessation of suffering, leading to Nirvana, uh, we've got perfect vision, we've got perfect emotion, we've got perfect speech, perfect uh, action, perfect livelihood, perfect effort, perfect meditation, and perfect mindfulness. And, and these can be grouped into three, three groupings. So basically, you've got ethics. Um, so that you've got the threefold way, which is ethics, then meditation, and then wisdom. Um, so ethics, you could, you know, say is the is perfect action, perfect speech, and perfect livelihood. So they they're the things that we kind of try and do outside of meditation to. Um, be, be as skillful as possible, um, you know, so we try and make our livelihood as, as ethical and uh, as conducive to, to spiritual life as we can, you know, so we don't, you know, we, maybe we moderate the amount of uh, time we spend working and, and, you know, so we give ourselves enough time for, for, for meditating and for, for reflecting and that sort of thing, um, you know, we don't, we're not, workaholics um, you know and we watch our speech so that you know that that leads to happiness for ourselves and others and uh, and we watch our actions you know. so that's ethics and then you've got meditation so it's like perfect um, effort so perfect effort is is overcoming unskillful mental states um, that are already arisen uh, preventing unarisen, unskillful mental states from arising. So, you know, we sort of make effort to not let them come into being. Um, to um, cultivate skillful mental states that haven't yet arisen and to maintain skillful mental states that are, that are all, already present. So, so we're kind of, yeah, we're working on... Um, Basically, you know, turning our mind from our mind and emotions and even our bodily states from being ones that conduce to suffering to being ones that conduce to happiness, from being unskillful to being skillful. So, um, so, and then in, so that's, this is part of meditation. So meditation is partly a kind of more concentrated, um, a more concentrated uh, effort to be skillful. So it's like we're simplifying 
with meditation, we're simplifying the conditions that we're in. You know, we, we're sitting in a quiet place where we're not going to get disturbed and we're trying to be as comfortable as possible so we're not going to dis be disturbed physically by our, our own body. Um, we're working with our posture to so our body supports the, the weight of the, uh, the, uh, the structure, the, the bones of the body support the weight of the body and then we can re re relax, which is like that, and filling a fist. Um, so when we when we let when we're not being occupied with our body, our mind and emotions are not being occupied with our body, then you know they are free to engage with the subjects of the meditation. So whether that's developing loving kindness, or whether it's developing awareness through the mindfulness of breathing, or whether it's reflecting on the nature of how things are through an insight meditation, or whatever it is, you know, then we can more freely put our energy into that. Uh, yeah. Um, so you got, yeah, so you got perfect meditation, uh, samadhi. So samadhi means, um, it's a Sanskrit word, meaning um, almost like concentration or collect, it's like collecting yourself together. So the, it means, Sam means complete or total, and Adi means direction. So Samadhi is like the whole of our psyche is orientated and working together in the same direction. Um, you know, so it's not like we're, we're wanting to do something emotionally and then our mind is wandering off, you know. So our mind is with the thing that we're trying to do and our body's there with us as well, you know. So I said, I've talked about the, when we do body work, don't let the mind or body race ahead of the other, you know. Keep them in the same place and together sort of thing. So, yeah, so you've got perfect samadhi, perfect meditation. Um, um, so if, if we're going to bring about happiness in the world, we need to to be as present to that task as possible, you know, and have as much of us there, of that person as there as we can. Uh, and then perfect mindfulness. <clears throat> um, so perfect mindfulness is associated with the four foundations of mindfulness. Body, mindfulness of body, mindfulness of feeling, mindfulness of mind or chitta, which includes um, emotions and thoughts and attention, three aspects to chitta. And then mindfulness of dharmas, or I think the best way of looking at that is views, the views that we have about the world, the, 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 the map that we use for navigating the world, you know, how do things work? You know, what's, what's the best overview we can have of everything so that we actually do the actions that we need to do to, to move towards Nirvana. Uh, yeah, so so the so perfect effort, perfect mindfulness, perfect meditation are all associated with meditation. And then finally, you've got um, <coughs> perfect um, vision and perfect emotion, <coughs> um, which is sometimes called the Theravada sources. Sometimes call that perfect resolve. Um, and uh, so anyway, so. In a way, this is these are more like the wisdom, wisdom and faith aspects of things, you know. So um, we're orientated towards how things are, towards three jewels. We have faith in the three jewels. Um, where our emotions are engaged with the path, uh, and also we're sort of seeing things clearly how they are. You know, perfect vision, which is often associated with. Um, uh, you know, seeing the nature of things, seeing how they're impermanent. All things are impermanent. All things are subject to, well, they're, they're, they're unsatisfactory to the extent that they can't give us lasting satisfaction because they're impermanent. And uh, they don't have us, there's nothing fixed about them. Yeah, so that's, so, so, this is the Eightfold Path. So you've got these individual elements. And it's almost like um, with conditionality, 
you've got uh, it's almost like you've got all these different elements that all together are all important to bring about nirvana. So um, if we don't, if we if we focus a lot on ethics, um, for instance, but then we don't focus very much on meditation. So on um, samadhi. So we don't, you know, we've got all the best intentions in the world, but then we don't. Um, we can't concentrate. You know, we can't bring our mind to the task. You know, then that isn't. Uh, that isn't. Um, we're not going to get to nirvana, you know. And similarly, the other way around as well. So if we're if we're very together, if we've got the if if we're um, sometimes people when talk in mindfulness world, they talk talk about you know like a sniper having you know really good mindfulness, but you know um, that's just, you know that you can just concentrate. So military people are very good at being all together and concentrated on the task, but but what the what the what the task that they're attending to needs to be put through the the filter of ethics. You know, is it is this actually going to lead to happiness or not? Is it or is it going to lead to suffering? So so it's almost like we've got all these different plates that we're spinning that are right, you know keep that one going, keep that one going, you know, am I being mindful enough? Am I being have a have I got enough concentration, but are my ethics up to up to scratch? Um, yeah. So I think, you know, when we've got all these different lists, you know, so say the five spiritual faculties. Um, so you've got um, concentrate, you've got samadhi is one. So you've got mindfulness is in the middle, uh, balancing the other the other faculties. Uh, and you've got concentration. Samadhi, meditation, and then you've got uh, virya, which is like ethical robustness, which is like um, not giving up, you know, when things get difficult, or um, it's 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 letting your energy serve skillfulness. So, so you could say that, uh, yeah, we don't we don't collapse emotionally just because things get difficult. We carry on being skillful. Um, so it may, it's associated in a way with being out in the world and where the, all the difficulties can come up. It's not so difficult in meditation, but once we get back in the world, it's like we need that virya, that energy in pursuit of the good to keep going. So concentration and virya, are, samadhi and virya are a pair that we need to balance. And then we've got um, faith or shraddha, confidence, tr confidence, trust, confidence in the dharma. And wisdom are a pair as well. So it's like, you know, too much faith and not enough wisdom, and we're just gullible or something. You know, too much wisdom, we're not enough faith. We're uh, maybe we're sort of a bit dry and analytical and uh, unemotional or something. So it's like all of our faculties need to come on board. To in order to attain nirvana, so so there's another list of five that are, that we need to keep the plate spin, spinning with all of them. Yeah. <clears throat> um, yeah. So so the what are the thirty seven wings to awakening? Um, so um, there's a there's, there's a guy called. Um, Rupert Gethin, who's a, a, a well-known Pali scholar. In fact, well, he's the, he, I don't know if he still is, but he was the president of the Pali Tech Society. And he's, he's, uh, he's done a lot of work in this area, uh, looking at um, uh, the, the, the seven, what's called the seven sets, um, which, which, uh, which the, the 37 wings to awakening are, are, are divided up into seven sets. And um, so I, I've I've sort of tried to make sense of, of this um, this teaching, um, and uh, this is the main the main thing that I'm going to um, try and share with you today using uh, screen sharing, which I've not used on one of these sessions before. So I, I don't know if it's going to come out back to front. That's the problem. Um, 
anyway we'll see how we get on we'll have it right way around at some point if when the video gets gets edited so. <clears throat> So I think that um, uh, I think there's stuff that we can get out of looking at the, at the it, even though it's com you know you might think oh this is really complicated. Um, it isn't. It is in one way, and it isn't in another. It, you know, it's like uh, there's there's some sort of there's some sort of logic to the whole thing. Um, so yeah, just have just have have faith, and uh, we'll see see how we got on with it. Um, all right. So let's begin. So I'll share the first screen. Okay, so here we are. So these are the um, these are the five paths. So we've got um, the path of accumulation, sambramaga, the path of application, prayoga marga. Sometimes they get these get given different names, but um, the path of seeing, darshana marga, the path of practice, uh, bhavana marga, and the path of fulfillment. Nishtamaga. And uh, and then each path is made up of uh, a number of um, elements. So when you add all these together, the f you get thirty. You get the thirty-seven wings to awakening. So the thirty-seven wings to awakening are made up of these seven sets. So in the path of accumulation, um, so we can think of like the path of accumulation is like. Uh, we're building up the conditions to uh, to to just make um, our life more more skillful, um, and we're we're basically working on we're working on the four foundations of mindfulness, which is set number one: uh, body, feelings, mental states, and views. And we're trying to turn those from being sources of suffering to being sources of happiness um you know so if our body's in a state of tension then it's a source of suffering um a feeling might be absolute might be direct suffering or it might might it might be that we're creating suffering through how we're responding to feeling to our, you know to, to you know so if we're if we um we're in, a, we're in a bad mood or something because we're thinking thing, various things that are not, um, you know, if we're thinking, oh, I'm, I'm a failure or whatever it is, and at least it's feeling depressed, then that's a kind of, um, it's probably an unskillful way of, of it's, a, it's probably not a helpful view, really, uh, because we've all, all got the potential to, to change, so we're not fixed. So, so yeah, so... With all four foundations of mindfulness, kind of a, a sources of, of happiness, um, and then you've got set number two, sources of suffering or happiness. So you got set two, the four right efforts. So this is those bringing um, bringing uh, effort towards turning each of the four foundations from being a source of suffering to being a source of happiness. And then set number three is the four bases of success, which we can see as um, getting somewhere with that. You know, so we're, we're actually, uh, you know, we're managing, we're becoming successful in turning them, the four foundations of mindfulness into being sources of sources of happiness. Uh, that's the simplest way of looking at that. Uh, so each of the four. Each of the four um, uh, bases of success is associated with with um, one of the four foundations of mindfulness. So, so with feeling, you've got virya. Uh, with views, you've got investigation. 
with mental states, it, it's chitter with body. Uh, I think it's desire or something like that. Um, anyway, yeah. So what happens next is that um, we've made this effort to uh, to work on on our mindfulness on the on that level. Um, so mindfulness as a foundation, mindfulness as a foundation. So I'll just switch over to another another um, screen. So here we have mindfulness as a foundation at the bottom. Four eight efforts. Uh, preventing, eradicating, developing, and maintaining. And then we end up with the four bases of success. We've got uh, Chanda. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a complicated term, this basis of success, but each one is, has a particular orientation. So it's Chanda is body. So it's like we're, we're it's almost like through working on our body, we're, we're kind of letting our interest become more available. Um, where it's uh, ethical robustness of very areas associated with feeling. So we become more, more robust. We, we've worked, we can work with our feelings and, and uh, you know, we don't get distracted by them. Uh, and then you've got purification, which is associated with the mental states and the mind and investigation. Okay. So um, now, this is my material here, where if you see at the top, it says the five spiritual faculties. So it's almost like the, um, the, the, the path of accumulation turns into the path of, of application um, because we've developed these different areas and we end up with the body leading to concentration at the top there, samadhi. So we work on the body, mindfulness of the body, and the outcome is um, is samadhi. Uh, we work on mindfulness of feelings, and the outcome is ethical robustness or virya. We work on our mental states, and the outcome is is confidence uh, in the dharma. You know, so we're practicing. Uh, meditating and stuff and then we end up um, thinking oh this works and the outcome of view working on views through, through investigation is wisdom so so uh, on, at the level of the path of application uh, mindfulness becomes a spiritual faculty so it's in the middle there uh, so this, that's the it's one of the five spiritual faculties along with the others and it balances out those different areas it balances out concentration and ethical robustness it balances out faith or confidence and wisdom and at this level uh it's like uh it's almost like well with the path of accumulation the person is just is just generally um uh, developing skillfulness but i think what happens with the path of application the four the five spiritual faculties is that it's like the the, the practitioner thinks in term is thinking in terms of um i need to really go for refuge much more strongly because all of those uh five spiritual faculties are all orientated towards the three jewels you know so it's like it's confidence in the three jewels it's wisdom which is the view of the dharma uh it's it's concentration on nirvana um it's robustness in terms of not giving up the path to nirvana so so it's almost like there's a there's a, a self-reflexive element comes in there and I th the person thinks I, re I really need to work on myself and i need to build up my spiritual personality so that in inverted commas so that these this is what i need to get you know to prepare myself for for taking reality in so the path of application 
just go back to the previous slide. So the path of application has the five switch of faculties um, and the five powers. So a power is just a spiritual faculty that's become unshakable. So what the path of application consists in is like taking seriously the um, developing the sorry de developing this five switch of faculties and building them up to be powers you know so making our concentration unshakable making our ethical robustness unshakable uh, our confidence our faith unshakable our wisdom unshakable and our mindfulness unshakable this is this is the five powers um okay so what we've got here is the equivalent to um in meditation in 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 um uh, in the dhyanas uh it's the equivalent to going up to the fourth dhyana so in the fourth dhyana we're prepared uh, we're ready for to take on reality you know the mind has become adaptable and flexible and emotions are like that as well and everything is is ready to to look at reality so at the level of the path of seeing um which consists of the seven factors of, of awakening uh, mindfulness is, is yeah, yeah. Mindfulness is, at this level is uh, is a factor of awakening. So, um, so it's almost like we're able to bring at the level of the path of seeing. We're able to to bring mindfulness to anything. Um, you know, it's not going to. We're not going to recoil from whatever we're looking at because the mind and emotions are just are just uh, robust and flexible and interested in being skillful and they are skillful they're as skillful as they can be so there's nothing in the way then to get of seeing of seeing the way that things are um yeah so we go up the uh um we have mind, we start with mindfulness and then we investigate dharmas we investigate uh, reality really um, and you know so and then we we just start looking at, at aspects of, of existence and uh, what do I say here That's right. So, yeah, so what happens in the um, spiral path uh, beyond knowing and seeing things as they really are is like um, the, the, the meditator starts to see what isn't helpful to invest in. You know, so think everything that's marked by the three marks of conditioned existence, impermanence, um, non-selfhood and uh, suffering isn't something to be invested in so it's something to be let let go of you know so when we investigate dharmas at this level it's like we see what what to invest in what not to invest in so obviously we start investing in the transcendental refuges and let go of um the world you know the the world of that isn't the of 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 sensation and the world of sensory, well, relying on sensation, sensory experience as a source of happiness. Um, uh, yeah, and put our, you know, put our, put our investment in into, um, you know, the, the transcendental kind of factors. So when we do this, um, we develop the. Uh, factor of ethical robustness so um 
So it's almost like the, you know, we, we're no longer going to be shaken by or distracted by, um, you know, things that are, that, that, that are, they're going to lead to suffering, you know, um, and our ground becomes much more strongly on uh, things that are reliable, you know. So it, in terms of, say, faith, for instance, you know, our faith would become much more strong, strongly orientated towards uh, the, the refugees and towards our guru and towards our uh, figures that, are, that we find inspiring, transcendental figures that we find inspiring and and even, you know, like if, if we're Tibetan Buddhists, our, you know, our teacher would become really important. Um, so this is what we'd rely on more and more as time goes on. Um, because those things are reliable. Um, and then what happens then is we experience joy, the, the, the factor of awakening of joy, because, because all this is working. It's working, you know. Um, we, we're relying on things that are reliable. Uh, we go for refuge to our teachers. We keep, we, in fact, the Buddha does this in a way. He goes for refuge to the Dharma. He, he, he needs something to look up to. So we keep orientating ourselves towards the three jewels, towards our teachers, towards our gurus. And then um, you get the factor of tranquility. So this is often associated with uh, the mind developing various faculties like uh, it's pasadi, so um, it becomes calm and uh, ethically upright and clear and um, flexible and adaptable. So this is the this is the, what happens in the fourth dhyana, third third no before the third dhyana, where the mind becomes adaptable and flexible. This is the same thing, but happening on a kind of transcendental level, uh, where it's becoming really like that, you know, under all circumstances. And then the mind is able to concentrate uh, completely, you know. So this is like the the situation where, uh, you know, the Buddha and the king, the, the Buddha and the king. So that where the king said to the Buddha in a certain scripture that. Oh, I could, pro you know, I'm happier than you are. I could, you know. Uh, and the Buddha says, well, could you sit still for a day, you know, uh, or an hour? Or, and then he said a day. And the he said, well, I could sit still for a week if I wanted to. So it's like there's nothing that would disturb the Buddha's concentration because there's nothing that's, that, that is, can't be included with, within that concentration. With it. So it's like samadhi, the whole of the Buddha's psyche is, is together with reality um, and then finally you've got equanimity at the, as the, at the top of the seven factors of awakening so um, you know result of all of that uh, is that um, you know there's, there's, there's just this balance of equanimity and uh, often I think equanimity often is added to concentration because uh, it does add it does add the idea that 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 concentration is sustained under all circumstances of pleasure and pain. So you know we're not distracted by pleasure. We're not distracted by pain. Our skillfulness is is always completely um, uh, well. Nothing can ship. Nothing it will distract us from from that skillfulness. So then finally, you've got the, the path of practice, uh, which is set seven, which is the Noble Eightfold Path. Um, and we could say that this is just, uh, it's like practice happening on the highest of levels. So this is almost like the Buddha uh, just naturally being, having perfect vision, perfect emotion, perfect action, perfect speech, perfect livelihood, perfect effort, mindfulness and meditation as a natural uh, way of living and being. Um, so it's the transcendental Noble Eightfold Path. And then the path of fulfillment is, um, isn't really a path, it just marks the, 
the the end, you know, the goal that Nirvana has been been achieved. Uh, yeah, the path of sometimes called the path of no more learning. Um, so uh, I got quite interested in like why, how, you know, how, why did why have the Tibetans got this path, and why why have the uh, why did Theravada Buddhists just focus on um, the four foundations of mindfulness mainly, and um, think that in terms of insight and overcoming. Uh, seeing in seeing into the seeing the, the the into the impermanent nature of things and and all that. Um, well, it might be that, and this is complete pure conjecture. It might be that the five paths are a kind of uh, a kind of remedy to a sort of one sided view among uh, Theravada Buddhists that that it's all about wisdom. You know, it's all about just seeing seeing into the nature of things. So if we if we, if we start off with the the um, four foundations of mindfulness, um, and we don't, you know, we don't really include emotion that much, you know. So emotion. Um, I'll just go back to slide number one. No, sorry, wrong one. Uh, yeah, so we've got um, Mifus as a foundation at the bottom there. Um, so emotion comes under mental states. Um, so yeah, so but if we don't think in those terms, and I think Theravada Buddhists tend to sort of treat emotion as something that's inherently to be overcome rather than something that's, that's part of being human and that needs to be orientated in the right direction. So I think that's the Tibetan view, the Mahayana view, that, uh, that you, 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 you guide you, your emotion in, in, in a positive direction, uh, you know, through the metabhavana, through faith, those sorts of things, yeah. So yeah, so if we if we if we if we have this, you know, the the set if the second path follows on from the first path, and so you end up with the five spiritual faculties following on from the four foundations of mindfulness, then it's really emphasizing that emotion is a good is an important part of the spiritual life and needs to be needs to be part of this, um, and. Uh, and in Tree Ratna, we do have this um, emphasis on spark five spiritual faculties um, and uh, and a strong emphasis on emotional cultivation through the arts and you know through friendship and that sort of thing. So yeah, so I think um, you know it, this does stand up as a as a as a, a remedy to a kind of imbalanced way of looking at mindfulness. Um, of just seeing it as about insight and uh, about attention, you know, and not about emotional cultivation, not about the metabolism. So, so in a way, this is, you know, probably why Sangharachita's got integration, positive emotion, spiritual death. So, spiritual death would be the path of seeing, um, and then spiritual rebirth. So, that would be the path of practice. Um, yeah, and uh, yeah, so I think, and and my own, what I've come up with in the end. I mean, this is, this was this paper I did was in two thousand and thirteen, um, but probably maybe about four years ago I started to, or maybe a bit more, I started to think in terms of um, actually. Uh, it's logical that if if you're, you know, if the bottom line for all living beings, sentient beings, is they want to be happy and not suffer, um, 
then basically you need two things for that to happen. Um, it, you need to want it for them and them and others, for yourself and others, which is loving kindness. So you really need to develop a lot of loving kindness before you're going to be motivated to overcome suffering for for beings, including yourself. And then you need you need to know how to bring it about. You know how to bring happiness about. So. That, so that's like mindfulness. The mindfulness brings awareness to the different conditions, like the four foundations of mindfulness, sees whether the sources are suffering or, or not, and then tries to turn them into being, from being sources of suffering to being sources of happiness by practicing the four right efforts and then developing the four bases of success and then letting that lead to into the five spiritual faculties and then that, letting that, help support the path of seeing and the path of practice and the final path of no more learning. So I hope that's, uh, maybe you need to go over this again if it's, if you got lost at some point, but um, no, I think, I think I feel kind of quite satisfied with this as an explanation of, of the, uh, the seven sets and the, the, the um, 37 wings to awakening and all that. And uh, hopefully at some point we'll get it pointing, you know, the, the right way around. Okay, that's it. All right, thanks everybody. Bye. -bye.